always said goodbye to him at the door, always. Uh, even though, uh, because both of us were early risers. But that night I had overslept because it was the change, the time change. So he already had left when I finally got up. I got up and it was very eerie and dark and then, like, it's almost as if I had a premonition of something. And like five minutes later, the phone rings that he had phone. We had a freak snowstorm and it was cold and icy and, and he fell striding to work as he usually did. And I'm sure he was just walking briskly as he usually did in a half a block from the office to have him fall and have that happen. I guess it was about 10 minutes to 8 and I got a call from our head nurse to say that Bob had fallen and was um, on the way to the hospital. We tried to um, institute some of what he would have wanted at New York Hospital, which was probably a first for that in bringing him some, some nutrients and vitamins to support him. Being an optimist, we had hoped that he would recover, but a realist inside of me said that there was really not, no chance. He did not come out of a coma, but I was whispering in his ear constantly and say, sweetheart, if you can hear me at all, please give me any sign, any sign at all that you can hear me. And I see like a flickering going over. I thought it was a flicker, then I said, it must be the light. Then goes like this. So I said, Valentina, my sister, come, come here quickly, come here quickly, he's moving. And he did it four times. So he let me know that he could hear me. That was the last communication I had from him. Dr. Robert Adkins died Tuesday, April 17, 2003, at the age of 72, from head injuries sustained in his fall. It was shocking, it still is. I mean, there are times I still expect Bob to show up, even, even now. Do you know, I have to tell you, I still don't believe it. I will never believe it. He's alive for me. He will always live. And I'll never accept it. I can't accept it. And I'm a pretty realistic person, but I just can't accept this. Even after his death, Atkins sparked controversy. In February of 2004, his final medical report was leaked to the press. It indicated that at the time of his death, the doctor weighed 258 pounds, well, first of all, I was very numb, but it still, it hurt me because even in death, they could not leave him alone. And he was not obese and he had severe brain injury. And that's what he died of. I know people who saw him, you know, in the hospital while he was, you know, hooked up to all these tubes and, you know, that his, his hands were just incredibly increased in size because of all the water retention. And uh, I mean, I saw him a month before he passed away. He looked the exact same as I had seen him you know, over the last previous seven years. And to think that he was any different is just a shame and inappropriate. We sometimes do see people accumulate a lot of fluid in the hospital. Usually that occurs when they have a very severe infection and they have a protracted hospital stay. For physicians to simply pump in 40 or 50 pounds of fluid, I would keep in mind that a liter of fluid is just over two pounds. So we're talking about 20 to 25 liters of excess fluid pumped into his body. Atkins fought all of his life to change the way we eat. Though he isn't around to enjoy his triumph, every low-carb product in the supermarket is a testament to his passionate perseverance. He would have been pleased, very pleased. How could he not? Because through it all, you know, in thir 35 years, almost 40 years, he was attacked, 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 and then all of a sudden, look at it right after he dies, unfortunately. I'll bet he's orchestrating that from up in heaven, but I believe he would be ecstatic. It is absolutely crystal clear that if I'm right, the rest of the world is wrong. And those two facts are both true. For a while, the Atkins diet was the most popular diet in the world, but like countless others before it, it may have had its day. In fall 2005, the company Atkins founded filed for bankruptcy. Not because it was the victim of a drop-off in interest in low-carb products, it explained, but because of competition from other companies offering similar diets. With Atkins, doctors were always concerned that some people were mistakenly focusing only on certain aspects of his diet. His book and company always stressed the need to eat fruit and vegetables, but many thought they could simply eat all the things they liked, like burgers, steaks, cheese, and bacon, without supplementing that with fruits and vegetables. Experts agree that Atkins can work in the short 
short term, but it's difficult to sustain. And the problem with all quick fix diets is that after the initial weight loss, the pounds come back pretty quickly. But there will still be those who swear by it and others who will abandon it for the next craze that offers a quick and easy fix. For the Biography Channel, I'm Darren Osborne.